There were many different countries in the world, and she, he, you, and I knew that. But we would investigate and learn about the world, the universe, the planets, and we would eventually meet in a strange place, the museum. We're outside that ominous building, the grasses grew tall and had also been sheared short into the gray cement. And where there was a fountain, with little gray steps that dared you to cl climb them. Because that was where the little children ran and played in their bathing suits and bare feet. The opening of doors in the night on the other side of the world and the closing of them in the morning stayed in rhythm with the constant laughter emitted by the children. And a couple of business people walked along the streets which matched their prim and perfect suits. But we were not those people. We were from different places and we would all meet in a strange place, the museum, where some brief cases flinched from water um, and some people bathed in them where carrots selling food wafted their aromas into the faces of innocent passerby and portraits and paintings and photographs created their own museum outside and smiling faces waiting in lines with a few scowling and tired children or with the happy ones which scampered around excited for their turn to climb up the dull colored steps that led to exotic rooms and echoing chambers and big displays. But we did not have children. We were from different places and we would all meet in a strange place the museum. And bikes were scary to animals and dogs were scary to daring mountain climbers. And cars skidded along the edges of sidewalks and fences cut you and glared at you. But beyond the fences were trails and beauty and flowers and a place to run and do so hedges and bushes in the crisp air that is humid, warm and cold. The type you want to walk in forever when you get out of a car. But we did not own any cars. We walked into different places and we would all meet in a strange place, the museum, while looking at Egyptian statues of cats. What is going on? That, okay. Wow, all right. Um, let me try, that was so, that was so good. Emma, that, that reminds me of Italio Calvino. Actually, that reminds me a lot of his, who is a, someone we were talking about in the in the first few meetings that we had as a group. Um, it really reminds me of uh, Italio Calvino's uh, short stories, his kind of like weird fantasy, almost um, surreal, you know, the, the stories that I talked about the very first class of this session. Um, so if you if you haven't already read him, you might you might check him out. You might be into him. Um, OK, so a couple things. First of all. That sentence was just, I mean, an astonishing range of, uh, of figures and places, um, images and descriptions. Um, it was very much the linguistic version of a Bruegel painting, very much so. Uh, if I had to categorize it, I mean, I'm, I, I didn't mean to do this when I started talking about Lena's sentence and now talking about yours, but we might as well think about these long sentences in terms of the long sentences that we read in the presentation. And I would place your sentence in the Henry James category. Um, although your sentence, frankly, is, I think, in some ways better than the Henry James sentence, uh, but it's like Henry James in the sense that within the confines of a single sentence, we are moved across time and space. Um, so we are at this museum with grasses and fountains and gray steps and children playing and people in suits and people bathing in the fountains and their faces, many, many faces sm smiling and scowling. Um, there are exotic rooms, etc. But then there's also this long passage about the landscape beyond the fences, the trails and the flowers and the places to run. Um, so there's so much movement in the poem, literal movement that moves us from place to place. So many figures. I mean, it's a your sentence is one that is uh, populated. It's populated by by people. But here, okay, here's the here's the thing though that I love most about that poem or that story that you just read which has nothing to do with the fact that it's a long sentence. I just think it's really weird and interesting. <laughs> the characters in your story are named he, he, I, and you. <laughs> that's, a, that's weird. I've never heard anything like that before ever. So he, he, I, and you 
are not from this place. The place that these characters uh, inhabit in that sentence are not from that place. So they are, in other words, in a strange land. Um, they congregate for some reason at the museum. Um, the museum seems to have this kind of, the museum itself has this kind of like mystical aura. This, um, I, I believe it's referred to as, as ominous or something. Like, do you use a word like that to describe it in some way? Anyway, it's, it's this, for some reason, it's the site of congregation. People are, are children are playing around it. People are passing by, bathing in its fountains and so forth. Uh, but he, he, I, and you, we are constantly reminded throughout the sentence, are not from this place. We're not these people. Uh, we're not the people in suits. We're not the people who own cars. Uh, so that's, that's a really like, it's a really interesting way of constantly reminding the reader of the, of the distance between the, the primary characters, he, he, I, and you, the we of, of the sentence, the, the distance between the primary characters and the place that they now inhabit. It's very strange. Um, and, and, and always, if I've, I know I've said this to you, Emma, but for those of you who might be wondering, I always consider strange and weird to be very positive adjectives when describing literature. So um, that was great, Emma. Thanks for reading it.